All right. Welcome, everybody, to another Monday Night Call. It's ha- it has officially been relabeled Rookie Roundtable. So, you know, this is for <laughs> Luis. I love it. Love the energy, bro. Love it. So, you know, I always play that song. That's one of my favorite songs. It's one of my favorite movies ever made. I can't believe they made a second one and it was actually better than the first one. But that always gets me pumped. And when we can get ourselves into a higher energy state, we absorb information better, right? I mean, if we sit here slouch, just like hoping that Alex and Natalie are, are, is going to bring some value to me, chances are you're going to miss out on actually the real nuggets. But if you get yourself engaged, you get yourself into a higher state of energy, you're going to be able to absorb a lot more. You're going to want to participate and you're going to be more excited in an excited state. We absorb and and retain information better. So thank you guys for coming here. I know there's a whole bunch of new names that I actually have never seen. So I'll do a really quick intro of myself, how this call came about, and what we got for you tonight. Okay, so just kind of a little um, content or what is it? The table of table of content, something like that, whatever for the day. Um, So myself, uh, I have been in real estate for about 18 years now. And I started, I wish I had something like this back then, right? I think we take this space for granted. Everyone's like Zoom calls everywhere, all day, every day. But back in the day when I got started, back in the day, like I'm super old, but back in the day when I started real estate, I had a book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. I'm like, this is amazing. There was no community around it. Okay, he tried to create some sort of online community, but it's, you know, internet wasn't like the best. There wasn't a lot of YouTube stuff. So I, f- I joined the program and I wrote out my entire blueprint of how to create financial freedom for myself. But nobody was there to hold my hand. I was scared. I didn't have any money. I didn't know what to do. There was not much information. So I just picked up another Rich Dad, Poor Dad book or another uh the four quadrants, and then the ABCs of real estate. So I try to read as much as I could. That was what I could do, right? And it's, it took me six years from the time that I drew out my plan to purchase my first property. That is not the case anymore, all right? If you want to be in real estate, if you want to start a business, you can do that today. You can begin that journey today. The information is right there. The people that can support you are right in front of you. Okay, so there is no excuses anymore. Information is so available and it's free everywhere. Now, the trap and the caution is there is so much information that it can cause you to be more paralyzed, right? So before there wasn't enough information that kept me paralyzed, but today there's too much information and it keeps people paralyzed. They're like, oh, I don't know. This person's saying this, you know, Grant Cardone says this, Dave Ramsey says this, everything is opposite on all fronts. I don't know what to do. Let me, let me just be paralyzed a little longer. Now, being in rooms like this, you have an opportunity that most people don't take, right? The fact that you would actually take your time, your Monday night on a whatever holiday it is today to be on this call, that is be above what most people are willing to do with their Monday night. So. Pat yourself in the back and congratulations that you've made it. <laughs> you made it here because we're going to deliver tonight. Okay. I brought somebody here that is fire. She changed my life, literally changed my, my social media life, the way I see things, the way I, you know, deliver information, even on these calls after meeting her in the beginning, I used to talk about real estate, talk about money, talk about creating financial freedom. Now I talk about the impact that I want to make. And it's because of one quick conversation with her. She did a two second audit of my Instagram and spoke the truth of how she felt about it and immediately changed the direction that I've gone since then. And that was in January. Okay. So some of you guys have been on these calls or have seen these calls for years, but now it's about making an impact in the world. And how do we do it? All right. And for me, it's to do these calls I do seven calls a week, 
Okay. And I don't need to charge for it because I've positioned myself through the vehicle of real estate. And it wasn't always real estate. Of course, sales is included in, in everything and in every aspect of life. You're always selling yourself. So sales, real estate, and, um, you know, constantly growing myself. Those three things I think have really contributed to where I'm at today and the people that I have surrounded myself with and what value I've been able to offer others. So as others are starting to join in onto this call, um, again, be here to create value for yourself. This call has been going for over a year now. It's a year and a half that I've been running these calls. And we sometimes will have 40, 50 people here. Other times when there's, you know, when everybody just happens to be available, there's a hundred plus people in here. So whatever, whoever is in here, just know that there is no accidents. There is no accidents that any of you guys are in here listening to this. Okay. There is somebody in this room that you need to meet. I promise you that. And later on, towards the end of the call, we're going to break you guys out into random rooms where you get to meet and connect with someone that you're meant to connect with. So be ready for that. Um, and that's definitely the part you don't want to miss. Okay. If, if nothing, meet somebody and allow them to change your life and also be someone that can be changing others. So, okay. And before we move on to the, the main conversation today, last week, we ended off with, uh, you know, we talked a little bit about social media. How do we, you know, why is it important to have social media today? Right. For me personally, when I first started, I was just, I was social media had me. I would scroll through things, right? How many people here like scroll through TikTok and Instagram and stuff, right? What a time waster. Unless, unless there's a reason why you're doing it, right? And the reason why you would, you would do it is for research. You want to find out how you can be better on social media. And so I've brought somebody on today and I've already kind of edified her a little bit. But, you know, we're going to dive right into it. So, um, Nick, oh, actually, a couple quick announcements first. A, we've created something called the Deal Room or the Deal Tank on Saturday mornings. So myself and two of my peers, we are on the panel and we will critique deals and we will look at deals. And I think some people here have been on those calls or actually the first one was this past Saturday. It was awesome. Nick, if you can put in the chat, thank you. It was yeah. If you so can put the in the chat, section. Huh? still don't have Sue J in. Okay, cool. So there is a the link right shots. there that you guys can register and be a part of it. Be a part of that community. Basically, a you get to learn how to pitch deals. B if you have a deal, you may be able to find some investors there. And also between myself. And the two, uh, the two people that I have, we have over $280 million in real estate holdings. So we might be able to fund your deal. And maybe we'll do a little spinoff of business as well. Um, here in Vegas, I've actually tapped into a community of founders and funders. If you guys don't know what that means in the tech space, founders are the people that found a company and funders are the venture capitalists that invest in it. So there's a massive group growing here in Vegas, everybody moving from uh, California to Vegas. And, um, you know, I've tapped into that community and um, really, really excited to see what we continue to create. That's the possibilities of networking. Okay, so you guys are networking right now. This is part of that networking space. Um, it, there will, yes, there will be replays. It's going to be on our, in our com online community that we've created for it. So the replays will all be there. But last week we did, uh, I believe three different deals that we critiqued and went through. Um, and now there's going to be more structure, how, how we want you guys to deliver it, what information you got to know and yes, connect, right? If you have, if you want to connect with people, put it in the chat as well. Right, exactly what Jasmine is doing right there. Jasmine is a partner of mine, also in a lot of real estate deals. Her and Trevor here are with Massive Capital, and they're like my big brothers. Okay, so they're great. Connect with them. Really cool people. Uh, 
Okay, so without further ado, I'm going to introduce our guest speaker here, Natalie. Actually, I already kind of introduced her, but I'm going to... Hello, hello. Hey, Legend. hold on. I'm going to make you... I'm going to spotlight you real quick. Okay. What's <laughs> up, Legends? I love the energy here already with the music, and I got to see a little bit of the, the team call as well, which I thought was really cool on how you were kind of repositioning their minds to really create solid goals. And I know we talked about that on live the other day of like creating solid goals and getting clarity on our message. Um, and I want to highlight that, Alex, you know, with that first conversation we did have, it was a huge impact because I just said, step into yourself. <laughs> that was it, right? And I think- Kind of. <laughs> you know, I said it in a different way, right? Yeah, you're like, this shit sucks. <laughs> no. I, that's what I heard. I don't know. Maybe you, maybe you spoke it like be more yourself. I heard, you know, this sucks. <laughs> but okay. Yeah. You know, it's funny. So, you know, whenever we, whenever I met Alex it was back in January, he was only talking about real estate on his social media. What is the NOI? How to get your first deal? All of this jargon. And <laughs> we think about, you know, <laughs> how to relate and resonate with people. Right. You know, you're at a networking event similar to like what we're at here, right? We're all here for a common purpose with real estate, which is known because that's what the legends is for, right? To build wealth, to build financial freedom. But real relationships are made on the other side of the door. Whenever you go have coffee with somebody, you go have lunch, you really get to know that person with who they are, what they believe in, what they stand for, and more importantly, what they stand against. And so it's honestly been super cool to see Alex make that transition with your content uh, and really step into doing your calls on Sundays with talking about your spirituality. And I'm, I'm sure it's bled over into here and with what you're doing to legends. So I'll kind of kick that off with, you know, let's boost up the engagement in here. If you guys are on social media, what's your intention with it? Why have you been, um, you know, forthright with it? And what is your goal? Is it to get more exposure, to network with other people? Is it maybe to bring in extra leads for your business? Leave a comment in the chat and let us know what is your driving factor for showing up on social media a bit more consistently? Mm -hmm. Jay says to inspire the younger audience. That's huge. I, I, love, I love this question because now it makes people really think. They're like, ooh, what am I doing? <laughs> right? It's huge, right? It has to be aligned with your core values and your mission for your business overall versus just, uh, you know, kind of like a website that says, I invest in multifamily. I have 500 units. I'm awesome. Invest with me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. She's uh, making fun of me. <laughs> <It's> love. <laughs> <laughs> Cheryl says, uh, strap with family. She's doing it for her family. Barbara says it's to generate leads through education. Yvette says to expand and impact. Cheryl says for her children. These are awesome guys, lots of clarity. Trevor says help a thousand people create financial independence. One post can help you reach over a thousand people, right? And what's the next step after that, right? Getting them and driving them towards taking an action. This is what a lot of people don't really talk about with social media here. So let me see if I'm, we let me uh, share my screen, Alex. Yes, I will. Oh, yeah. I actually already have given you that power. And for anyone that's not doing social media, why don't you guys also share, and maybe I'm taking the thunder, but share why you haven't started. What would be like, what's in the way of you starting and doing social media? What's your belief systems around social media too? If you have not started. Ah, so like, why aren't you posting anything, right? good one um i think nick is sharing his computer sound which is why i can't share oh there you go you should have it now good to go perfect thanks nick awesome let's see what some of these people are saying i don't like attention i don't post anything i like this super raw right so I'm sure people are aware with Alex Ramosi, right? Alex Ramosi took the world by storm in the past realistically two years or so. And he made a video a couple months back that says, attention is the new currency. And I wanna to talk to you a little bit more about 
what are my friends and mentors and how they kind of broke this down for us on what does success actually mean, right? So pie, pie is the recipe for success. So it's performance, it's impact, and it's exposure. Most people think that performance is 50% of the equation for success, when in fact, it's only 20%. Once you start reaching at a certain level, reaching high peak performance, and you're in a room of other high performers, that becomes the baseline. That's what gets you into that door. So the next thing is going to be impact. Impact is the next 30% here. How much of an impact are you making in the community and the people around you? I think Jay-Z says that, you know, he brings everybody around him up because that's the kind of person that he is. Now, the third one, which is 50%, that last 50% is exposure because the person who has the most exposure is able to capture the most attention and influence that attention towards a greater goal. You might have seen people on social media today, you know, posting their Lamborghinis and their jets and doing all this cool stuff, telling you you can get rich quick. That's cool, right? Maybe, maybe not so much. Maybe it doesn't align with your core values. Who knows? Everyone's a little bit different here. But, you know, it's your responsibility not to yap or, you know, you know, say this is not right. It's our responsibility to go out there and share our message and say, hey, this is what we stand for and this is what we stand against. And this is how we're going about this mission here. So if anybody's on social media and you feel like it's a bit overwhelming, or maybe you just don't like what it's going, I encourage you to do, start with like a information hygiene, a social hygiene, right? Go on an information diet, go on your following list and see who you can unfollow that isn't just bringing that much value to your feed. We wanna curate our feed to not be a toxic environment. And that's why a lot of people feel like social media is a bit overwhelming or it's not serving them is because the environment that's been created is toxic. It's not allowing us to grow. It's not creating a space for us to nurture our minds and to elevate it. Uh, Jasmine, part of Massive Capital, we're in like a group chat of all of these different women. And she sent a post like literally right before this call that mentioned, you know, nobody regrets trying harder or working harder, right? And that influenced me. I was like, okay, I agree. I think I'm going to work a little bit later tonight after this call, right? So go on an information diet to really prime your mind for success. So whenever you do spend your 15, 20 minutes on social media, it's being intentional here. So we'll go ahead and dive into like the nitty gritty. If anybody has any questions at any point, please put it in the chat so we can make sure to get over to those. And Alex, if you have any questions as I'm going about this, feel free to chime in and we can create a dialogue for it. I'm a lot better at like, uh, freestyling and going through all of these like fun ideas. So we're up for it. Sweet. So this might be a little bit different than uh, some of the typical presentations that you see. So this is gonna be really interactive. And if anybody wants this template or this document after this call, feel free to just DM me on Instagram. My Instagram handle is on my little Zoom name here. I'm also Natalie Megan, the real estate marketing girl. It's for SEO purposes. So you'll be able to find me really quickly. And green is my color. You can't tell, it's part of my branding, right? <laughs> <laughs> Sweet, so how do you grow a profitable audience? And why does it need to be profitable? Well, in order to give something back, right? In order to give something, right? You typically wanna receive something back, right? And that doesn't just have to be in the form of leads or money, but it can also be in the form of influence. For Alex, it might even be reaching more teenagers to bring on to his team calls so that they're making an influence for the next generation. That's profitable in itself. So define what profit means for you. Now, if you're a real estate expert who's really wanting to double down on social media to uh, generate more leads for your business, whether it's for partnerships, to do capital raising, whether it's for you know, finding more passive investors and building them onto your list for the next project that you have, you're definitely going to want to take some notes. So pull out a piece of paper and a pen and let's dive in. So it starts off by leveraging organic content production, dynamic sales assets, and a value-based sales process. Today, we're really going to double down on that content creation aspect of it because it's content first. And we're going to talk about what it means to reduce the friction for the content that you're creating, right? So this is just, you know, who is this for? Cool, cool. 
All right. So typically whenever people start off with content creation, they go through this like mental battle, right? And we call this the pits of despair. And it starts off with people just never starting. They're always waiting for perfection. But then people get over that, right? And then next thing you know, they upload 10, 15 videos and they give up. Maybe because they're not getting too much traction. Maybe because they feel like it's a waste of time. They're not seeing those leads or DMs coming in. But the people who push back, push past that, momentum starts to build up. You start figuring out your niche. And at this point, the bottleneck for you becomes the systems to maintain this growth. Just like any business, it's similar to content creation. So at this point, you're figuring out the systems. You're getting the ball rolling. Your momentum is growing. And you keep growing and keep growing. And then at some point, you reach a station where you're struggling to maintain that growth. So maybe you're stuck at 20,000, 10,000, 5,000 followers there. Like, I can't get past this. I've been at this amount of followers for X, Y, Z long. I have leads coming in. But maybe the lead flow went down a little bit. What do I need to do? Reinvention. And this is something that you, Alex, you recently did back in January. You reinvented yourself. And what did that do? It has allowed you to spark new conversations with people that maybe wouldn't have reached out before because they didn't feel like they could relate with you. So it's funny how social media, and Alex chime in if you agree, it's funny how social media is also kind of like a personal development process because you learn a lot about yourself, clarity in your message, you build that confidence, and then you start speaking on the things that you're learning as you're going about. Alex, do you agree? Yeah, you know, we were talking about this yesterday, which is like, not only are you getting leads or, you know, whatever your goal is on social media, but as you speak on there, and you get used to your own voice, you begin to develop the message that you're delivering, you get clearer on it, right, it gives you the opportunity to do that. And also just developing your public speaking, you know, mm -hmm. and there's a study that says people that publicly speak makes 10 times the amount of money that somebody that doesn't. Right. That's like an average. So that's where you can start. Practice on your social media. <laughs> it's so huge, right? You know, it's funny because they did um there's like a statistic that says like the number one fear that most people have is the fear of public speaking. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it is terrifying standing in front of stage of XYZ amount of people and sharing your message. But social media is the perfect thing because you're literally just behind your phone, right? And you can test it and you can test it and people aren't going to boo you or tell you, oh, that's bad. They're just not going to watch the video. That's it. They're just not going to watch the video. In fact, I was talking to um, a TikTok executive a few months back, and they were telling us about how you have three seconds to capture somebody's attention. That's it. You have three seconds. You lose that attention. They're gone. Think about it. How, how fast does it take you to swipe? That's how much, a, that's how much time you have. If you get to the six second mark, you're already in the top percentile of creators. Now, what does it take to get someone from three seconds to six seconds? Just like with storytelling, it's 50% messaging, but also 50% of tonality and just like a visual hook as well, right? So messaging is getting clear on your message. We'll dive deeper into this here in just a second here. So the messaging is, what am I talking about? Am I passionate when I'm talking about it? Can people feel what I'm saying? And that's where tonality starts chiming in. You know, if I lean in and say, this protein shake is really gross. <laughs> I don't think I'm ever going to drink it again. You're probably thinking I'm saying something super serious and you need to lean in and listen to what I'm saying. But if I'm like, oh my God, this protein shake is amazing. You guys need to try it. It's chocolate, it's strawberry, banana. If you want it, Go to link in my bio and go check it out. Let me know how you like it. Two completely different vibes, right? Just from like the minor things that I just said. You know, I'm actually not a fan of this protein shake, but <laughs> nonetheless, right? Using your tonality is a great and honestly a fun way to really tap into be to creating better content. And this also allows you to deliver your message in multiple ways. So how do you do that? So for Alex, just because we're using you as an example, Alex, right. uh, give me a piece of a content idea and let's let's play with it before we kind of dive into like the tactical stuff. 
Um, okay. So why, why mindset is, is the most important thing to create success? Why mindset is the most important thing to create success? What specific like mindset factor? Um, man, putting me on the spot. <laughs> yeah. Um, like a, like the growth mindset where you see things more like, it, like, like the world is here to support you and there's enough versus there's not enough. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. This, mm -hmm. this gives me ammo. All right. So <laughs> abundance, go. abundance mindset. Yeah, there yeah. you go. Abundance yeah. versus scarcity. Abundance versus scarcity mindset here, right? All right. We're going to use this message. I'm going to give you two different content ideas. Alex, I would love for you to execute on these two using right. a range of tonality. Right? So we'll lean in with a soft voice. Whenever you speak softer, it gets people to subconsciously lean in as well. 18 years ago, I had a scarcity mindset. I was working a job. I didn't know what real estate was. I didn't, I thought, you know, I would never be able to do this for my, me or my family. So, you know, blah, 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 blah. Whatever your story is, Alex, get personal, get vulnerable and lean in and talk soft and use pacing. Right. But if you want to really like, you know, reach like the highly energetic crowd, you'd be like, if you have a scarcity mindset, you're about to lose the biggest opportunity of your life because guess what? The 2008 recession is happening again. And there's a huge opportunity here. And I'm going to break that down here in the caption. Read the caption for more information on how you can take advantage of an abundance mindset. Two completely different vibes, right? story, vulnerable, emotional, kind of a little bit heart-wrenching. And the second one is a bit more bold, ex more exclamation points, right? Two different completely vibes. And you're going to be able to also reach two completely different audiences here. You see what we're doing here? Same yeah. message, but just different audiences while also reinforcing your core values and your belief system. You can do this with any piece of content. And I challenge anybody to do it. So we'll dive a little bit deeper into how do you create the foundations for your content? Now, when people first start out with creating content, they're like, oh, I'm going to record 30 videos. I'm going to post them. They're going to do great. They sit there and they hope it works, right? And then eventually they post those 30 videos and maybe they don't get the traction that they were expecting. And then they start getting burnt out. They start getting a little bit resentful of social media. And then eventually they might get stuck here and they might give up they might just never post again which we don't want that to happen to you so there's a big way to prevent this here and it's with your brand foundations and so with these brand foundations what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be getting clarity just like you do with business right we gotta have a business plan we have to have a north star so we know where we're going and how we're going to be improving this skill set here right so click on this so with your brand foundations, what we're going to start off with is we're going to lay your story out on the table. So imagine you're doing an interview style process with yourself, right? You can do this on Zoom and use a tool called Fireflies AI. I'll go ahead and put it in the chat, fireflies.ai. And what you'll be able to do is talk through your story. Think about all the things that have influenced you in your life and if it makes it easier for you, reach out to a friend, maybe somebody on this call, partner together to do this together and interview yourself or interview each other and talk about, you know, all the way back to childhood. Did you grow up in lower income, middle class? Did you go to college? Did you drop out of college and start your own business? Did you work in nine to five? And did you maybe not enjoy what you experienced there? Did you feel undervalued? What made you realize your worth? What we're doing is we're laying out your story and really identifying what were the decision-making points that helped me pivot my life and make me who I am today and has influenced me to go to the direction that I'm going. Does that make sense so far? Thumbs up. Thumbs up. Good. So what we're going to do, and I'll write this down. And so again, if you guys want this document, this storytelling document here, has all of the questions that you could possibly need to be able to just dive deeper into this interview style process. And in fact, I'll add the Google document that has a list of questions if they're not in here. 
So what is this going to look like here? Fireflies AI, fireflies dot AI. It's always fun whenever you do it with people, right? Partner with someone, let's say in this group, and interview each other. And just go way back here. What you'll be able to do next is use ChatGBT, ask for hooks for content ideas. Now, what is this going to allow us to do? Instead of creating content that's like, what is the NOI, how to get your first property, how to calculate ARV, blah, blah, blah. We're gonna create content that's customized to your own personal story. Here's how I found my first property when I barely had $20,000 in the bank. Here's how I am working with a property manager to make sure that this property will X, Y, Z. Instead of here's how to, it's here's how I right? Completely shifted. What does this communicate to your audience? Authenticity. Doesn't give off this like slimy guru vibes. And it makes them actually relate and resonate and connect with you there. And so whenever we go through this process, we're going to go way back, like I mentioned. In fact, I'll give you an example of somebody that I work with. He is a multifamily investor. I think he's about 75 million assets under management. Um, capital raiser, operator, these boots on the ground, right? He was in the Air Force and he was six years undiagnosed with a severe brain injury. He was at a point where he could even hold his kid. But at the same time, he was still looking to invest in real estate until he just got sick and he got tired of being in pain all the time. And he finally forced the doctors to make a decision. And whenever that happened, that allowed him the strength and the energy to be able to go all in with investing in multifamily real estate. What a powerful story, right? I would have never have known that if we hadn't done this interview style process here. And today, you know, he's walking, he doesn't walk with a cane anymore. He's killing it in the multifamily game. He lives on the, like the nicest house in Montana with like mountains and he just bought a bunch of chickens which is so random. So he's gonna be showcasing that in his content there, right? And so again, what we're doing here is we're looking to relate and connect with our audience. So go to Fireflies AI, partner with somebody in this group and just interview each other and have a raw and authentic content or interview style process. Talk about some of your favorite podcasts, some of your favorite books and what you learn from them. The goal here is to learn how to articulate our thoughts. And like Alex said, this will help us not only with creating better content, growing a profitable audience, but also with connecting with others. And simultaneously, this will also probably help you with either raising capital, forming new partnerships, or even learning how to become a better networker. It's an evergreen skill set that we're building here. And I feel like not enough people understand this, is that content creation is a skill set. It's not something you can just kind of put a Band-Aid on your leg and hope it works right? It's a skill set that we're building here. And the goal is to influence people. And if we're taking on the responsibility of influencing people, we have to do the work. So this is the first thing that you're going to do to get clarity on your brand foundations. It's going to start with your storytelling document, which is this interview style process. The next thing you're going to do is you'll probably have a lot more clarity after this call or after this interview on what your core values are. And we're wanting to define what do I stand for? And what do I stand against? Every great brand stands against something. This is a little bit controversial. Every <laughs> great brand stands against something. What does Apple stand against? The lack of innovation. What does Tesla stand against? Um, climate change. What does SpaceX stand against? living on earth and going to mars right <laughs> exactly jj says gas cars tesla's also against gas cars um what are some other good examples i can't think of any organic food right what are they against pesticides on the food right we're all sold on something because we're sold against something else think about it 
We're all sold for multifamily because we're against being told what to do consistently and relying on a paycheck. Vegans. <laughs> Vegans, what is that? Against meat eaters. <laughs> oh, oh, vegans. <laughs> <laughs> Those That's people funny. drive me crazy, man. They drive me crazy. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. That's so true, though. <laughs> Alex, I'm curious. What do you stand against? What does the legends as a brand stand against? We stand against uh, poverty in the world, hunger in the world. And it's the same as that abundance and scarcity thought, you know, and I tell the story of like 2 billion people on the planet living in poverty. And Ooh. it's not because they're living scarce it's because we're living scarce and we allow that to happen. So, you know, I stand, the, I, I hate that, you know, this is why it's controversial. I don't like to say I stand against something. I like to say that I stand for something. Mm -hmm. right? And I think as I go in that direction, it, it will take care of the against for me. So. That's just my take. Oh, 100%. That's why I knew it was going to be controversial. Oh, yeah, I know. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> right? So what all of this does, and as I'm kind of talking through the purpose of the brand foundations, I encourage everybody to, you know, leave in the chat, what do you stand against? Or what do you stand for? Right? Whether it's a W-2, whether it's, it could, you know, vegans, it could literally be anything. Drop it in the chat so that way we can you know, find some common friends where you guys can relate together. So once you build a storytelling document, you find your core values, really define what the opposite of your core values means, right? I know whenever, you know, I was working through my own core values, right? You find your core values a lot through times where they were either compromised or, you know, someone didn't value them, right? So it's like, okay, I'm not going to stand for this anymore. Right. So this is so important. It's going to get you so much clarity in your messaging. It's going to give you confidence to speak out your message. And it's going to really help you step into a solid brand voice that actually represents who you are. It's a unique identity that stands out from the crowd. Has anybody else seen these, like all of these other real estate pages all talking about the same thing? Right. <laughs> They're all kind of talking about the same thing. You're like, dang, I wish, I wish I knew a little bit more about this guy. He seems cool. I, just, I don't know anything about him. I want to know what he stands for. I want to stand by him. I just, something's missing. That's what that is. You see someone's page. That's what's missing there is there's not that relatability. Nothing resonates with you there, right? And so what's going to happen from here is after you do this interview self process, you get identified with core values, maybe a book influenced it, maybe a podcast, Patrick Bet David, Gary Lee, Grant Cardone, whoever it is. But, ooh, this podcast really changed it for me. It's going to, again, going to help you articulate your thoughts. I want you to write these all down here. Write them all down, whether it's in a Notion board, such as this one, whether it's a Google document, whatever works best for you. Again, we're reducing the friction. You don't need all these fancy tools to be successful on social media. You just need somewhere to articulate your thoughts and really dive deeper into them. So once you get that done, you'll be able to at least have over a hundred different ideas that you'll be able to expand on. And these hundred ideas come from the seven to 10 topics that you'll consistently talk about. Mindset, health, wellness, real estate, spirituality, books, right? Um, these are just some ideas I think I have for Alex. You know, it could literally be anything. I see him work out here and there. But, you know, he's diversifying his content. And I think I saw someone say that they're running five miles to keep up with Alex, too. <laughs> <laughs> so you're inspiring people. It's working. It's working. So these are the brand foundations, guys. This is the action item. This is going to be the biggest one. Whenever you get in the breakout rooms at the end of this call, find a partner or maybe reach out to one of your friends in person and do an interview style process. Do it on Zoom. Use this tool, Fireflies AI. Just have a super candid conversation about just your life, essentially. And then use ChatGPT to kind of sift through that and come up with specific ideas that are aligned with you and your values and who you are as a person there. So, so hey, real quick, mm -hmm. some people fall into this trap too. And I know I did in the beginning too, which is 
we start talking about things that we think other people want to hear, even though we have our story. I think this is great that you're helping create clarity and, you know, for, for our individual stories. Right. But a lot of people, you know, even if you ask the questions like, Oh, what do you stand for? It's like, you know, for me, I'm like kindness, love, like, you know, that's real for me, but there's, you know, there's a, you know, on social media, we kind of get sucked into what we think other people want to say. And so what do you say, you know, for someone that may have certain viewpoints that maybe they just aren't confident to, to share, Mm -hmm. like, would you still do it? I mean, of course, I mean, I'm a bold person, right? And I, I, encourage other people to be bold and confident with whatever their message is Mm -hmm. baby steps right you don't have to you know go out there and scream to the world this is what i believe right but you can give examples right you can use again the concept of other people's stages you see someone talking about something that you agree with shine light on that this is why i agree with it this is an experience i had that reinforced this belief and we're talking about, you know, growing a profitable audience on social media to bring in leads for your business. So how does this all tie in together? We we'll use a one-fourth rule, right? For social media, for every four pieces of content, only one should really be focused around real estate. Here's how I'm buying my next property. Here's how I'm starting a fund. Here's how I. The other three would be focused around your interests, your hobbies, and challenging belief systems. So in the challenging belief systems, just test it. And you don't have to scream at the screen. You don't have to pretend like you're somebody you're not or say something that you don't believe is true. But if it's something as simple as a scarcity versus an abundance mindset, if you think that this is going to influence the person on the other screen, understand that you're going to be resonating and connecting with somebody that could possibly do business with you. Like I mentioned before, I don't know if I mentioned this, but, you know, we have a client that we work with who's a single family investor. And anytime a private lender gets on a call with them, they don't say, hey, I love your real estate content. I love that you know what you're talking about. They say, I love the fact that you're a parent. I love the fact that you're balancing family and wealth at the same time. How do you do it? I see you're posting about it. We align in these core values. You're consistent. You talk about this often. I know you care right? Those are the conversations that they're having that are influencing these people to take action and want to work with them here. Again, performance is only 20% of the equation. So it's super important to learn how to articulate your thoughts in a world where there's so many things that are trying to influence the way that we think, so much information that it almost feels paralyzing. There's strength in learning how to articulate your thoughts. And also teaching your family or the people around you how to do so too, right? There's so much like combat with the way that people communicate right now. And it all starts from the top and to the bottom, right? And the way to combat that is to create a dialogue and learn how to communicate and to, you know, learn how to influence people's perspectives there, right? So it's, this is all bigger than us, right? But it starts with small steps with identifying what do I actually care about? What do I want to talk about here? And using that one fourth role as we approach content. Does that make sense, Alex? Yeah, I love it. So Giovanna said she just had that aha moment. Isabel asked, are you saying to do this interview and record to post to? You totally can, right? But, you know, it just depends on like the quality of your conversation, right? There's probably gonna be moments when you're thinking through your thoughts and learning how to say what you wanna say, Isabel, right? So as you're doing this interview process with one of your friends, I would encourage you to just keep it to yourself because you might say things that you might not wanna put out into camera. And I'm not saying to put your whole life out there. Trust me, I'm not that kind of person who puts everything out there, but I do put my beliefs out there. I do wanna influence people in the way that they think. Right. So there's a fine balance with like oversharing, but also like influencing people with sharing the thoughts that you have there. Right. Hopefully that helps, Isabel. See, so we're going to dive a little bit deeper into the next steps of this here. Does anybody have any questions or Alex, do you have any questions? No, I think this is this is really great to start. We do want to. How much, how much longer, how much more you got of this? 
you know, I don't know. I texted you. I'm like, I don't know how much time I have. I could go <laughs> hours. And again, if anybody wants this document to get started, yeah. just DM me on Instagram, the word profitable, and I'll go ahead and share this over to you. Um, should we start wrapping up soon, Alex? Yeah, I want to start wrapping it up to, you know, to the Q&A part. You know, I think you've began some, something, you know, like, like what you've shared so far is great for people to just kind of now they can take action. You've given somebody a first action step, yeah. right? And I think for everybody here, it's really important that you are here. Again, you are here for a reason. That means you should take some sort of action after this call, right? Whether it's to go and make sure that you DM Natalie, right? To get the rest of this document that's going to get you started, right? <clears throat> um, you know, if they're not on Instagram, how do they find it? If you are not on Instagram, you can just email me here. Okay. And then just put your Instagram on there again. I think people are asking what it is. Yeah, I got it. Hey, is this .io thing the new thing, by the way? <laughs> is it the new .com? I'm curious because I'm about to buy up like every .io domain name if it is. <laughs> What do you think? Oh, that is so funny. Um, okay, let me do that again. I like IO because it, it feels techy. It feels new. It feels innovative, right? Um, is it the new thing? I don't know, but I like it. It feels new, right? I'm really thinking about just buying up some of these like really great words with the IO behind it. Yeah, because um, I know like with the social syndicate, we have app dot uh, social syndicate dot IO. And it feels just so like techy, new, innovative. Like I mean, <laughs> so, hey, I would recommend you do it for a platform like this. I think, you know, I think it's cool. All right, Nick, you heard this? We're doing it. Do it. I yeah. heard. Okay, great. Because Nick was like, no. But all right, <laughs> Nick, you've been outruled. You've been, now we're doing it. Okay, <laughs> so for for people that have, you know, take some sort of committed action, whether it's, I'm committed to getting my story down or I'm committed to making posts, like making a post tomorrow or mm -hmm. a post for the next seven days, right? Yep. Get to it and just do it. I think it's so important that we just do it. You don't need to perfect anything, right? Like I learned this because I was like, man, how do I shift? You know, I've already been doing content like this. And then I just did. There was a moment I told Nick, I'm like, stop all posting of all the content that I were going to come out with real estate. And I'm going to shift that. I'm going to change directions. And we started talking about mindset. And one of the things that I talked about, which is kind of controversial, I guess, is I brought God into a lot of the financial conversations, you know, and I'm always hearing from people like, whoa, that was a very interesting perspective. Like I've always wanted to bring faith and stuff into what I'm doing, but I just, I don't know how to bring it up. And, you know, I think it's, I'm looking for people that hear my message, right? I'm not looking to talk to the, to everybody I'm talking, I'm looking to talk to the people that, that can hear it. You know, mm -hmm. I'm looking to influence those people and bring them closer to my circle so that we can, you know, partner on something or see what I can help with, or they can help me with, right? um yeah it's huge it's so funny yeah. one of my clients he was playing golf on like a Wednesday he's like a he does uh capex management it's like construction management for multi-family people and he was like can I post this like what are people gonna think if I'm playing golf on a Wednesday they're gonna think I don't work hard or I'm like do you want to work with people who are gonna complain about you playing golf on a Wednesday <laughs> <laughs> So post it. <laughs> yeah. It's like a filtration process. So again, if you are just starting out with creating content, it doesn't have to be about real estate at first. Talk about something that you're comfortable with, whether yeah. it's fitness, you know, going on hikes, going on bike rides. Why you I, do? I I definitely feel like I'm starting to become more courageous on Instagram as well. You know, I used to be like. You know, I had a closed community for my spiritual call, right? And it would always be that for like four years. And then like this, after speaking with you and I just started, I started going live with it, you know, and it touched a lot of people mm -hmm. and, I, and I really love it. And, and it's been, it's been like the direction that I've been going with a lot. And recently I put 
you know, gym workouts in there. Cause I was, I always had some sort of weird judgment about people. I was taking all the selfies in the gym and then I'm like, you know what? Screw this, screw my judgment, you know, screw all of that. This is what I'm doing, right? I'm up to it. I'm up, I'm up for it too. And then that's created a whole bunch of different connections as well. And people reached out to me and then we're talking about health and working out. And then all of a sudden we're talking about real estate. And they're like, how do I invest in, uh, in something? I got 100K, I got 50K. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of, that, that's how relationships are built and sales happen. Yeah, that's exactly right. Um, and it's funny that you mentioned that as well, because you probably, everybody probably sees like the content has like the fancy captions, fancy B-roll, pop-ups, graphics, all these fancy sounds. She's making fun of me again. Go ahead. <laughs> well, so... I manage accounts that are, you know, have over a hundred thousand followers and we're finding that that kind of content is not performing as well as just pulling up your phone and hitting record. Right. So everybody who doesn't have a fancy camera, you're actually at an advantage on Instagram in particular, because people don't want to see that stuff anymore. It feels too. It's put it out. Fake. It doesn't feel like, oh, I, he actually thought about this like on the spot right? Like imagine me coming up to, your, to you at a networking event and I have like a whole script. Hi, I'm Natalie. I'm a real estate marketing girl. I do this, blah, blah, blah. Eh. You want to do business? You're like, what the heck? Unless <laughs> I go up to, you know, Barbara, I'm like, Barbara, your hair looks so great. How do you do it? And then we start talking and she's like, oh my God, I love that green on you. I'm like, thank you so much. It's my brand color. You know, I'm known as a real estate marketing girl. She's like, oh, what do you do? I'm like, oh, well, I mean, blah, 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 blah. This is what I do, right? Just and like, now- Just like that. Right? We're like, oh my God, I love Barbara. She's the insurance queen, right? <laughs> <laughs> right? So, I mean, that's the kind of conversations that we're having here through social media. So you're at an advantage. If you don't have a fancy camera, just pull out your phone, go on a walk and just hit the record button here. Just, okay, so, so some more, some just real quick, I'm going to ask one question, and then I'm going to open it up for everybody for the next um, 10 minutes. Yeah. So for what are some other practices for social media? Because like, if if I'm just getting people, I'm just posting videos, and there's people watching my stuff. What's the next step? How do I deepen this relationship? What do I do next? Good question. So you're posting content, you have people reaching out or you're posting content. That's the top of the funnel, right? Mm -hmm. The next step is you got to be consistent on your stories. Stories are what nurture people, right? Stories are what people to be like, oh, Alex is actually doing what he's doing, right? He's not just, you know, saying it without walking the talk, walking the walk, right? So start with Instagram reels or posts. Be consistent on your stories. Post at least once a day. Show your face, beautiful face. Just talk about something. The next thing is you're going to want to ask people to DM you. Simple as that. Don't tell them to go to the link in your bio. Ask them to DM you. This will feel more personable and actually get them to want to take action further. So you're posting content. In that content, you might have a call to action that will help them get to the next step. Mm -hmm. Call to action. We'll give you three examples here. Hey, make sure to watch my stories for some, you know, extra insider tips. So what's that going to do? They might turn on the notifications to watch your stories every single day. Next thing might be, hey, send me a DM with the word real estate or SFR if you want some more information, if you want to open up the conversation, right? Or the third one might be if you have like a specific offer, you might say something, again, to reduce the friction on them taking action, it'd be something along the lines of, hey, comment the word invest if you want some more information about this. What is that going to take them? Probably three seconds, reduce the friction. They just raise their hand that they're interested. And now you can reach out to them. And again, they're going to be like, oh, Alex reached out to me. I feel so special. Yes, <laughs> Alex, have my email. You can have my email. Send me all the emails you want. Super excited to work with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so the, that's the funnel for Instagram in particular. Reels, have a call to action. Ask them to comment or DM. The middle funnel is to nurture them, post on your stories consistently, show your beautiful face, talk about whatever you want. You can sell on your stories every day. Hey, we're doing a webinar tonight at 7.30. 
go ahead and hop on, do me the word and best, I'll send you a link. And the third one is going to be DMs, right? Nurturing those relationships and sending them a link, giving them resources there. So Alex, fun tip for you. I would say ask people to DM you instead of having a link in your, um, in your story. And I know I did it today, but instead of doing that, because it'll tell Instagram, hey, Alex gets a lot of engagement, a lot of DMs. I'm going to push out his content more. Hmm. Okay. Good point. I do have a team. Okay. That handles that DMs and reaches out to a lot of mm -hmm. real estate investors and um, people that are in the real estate space. And then also on the spiritual space as well. So my DM box is like ridiculous. It's been pretty hard for me to keep up with it, but I have met really, really, really great and awesome people through it. I don't know how to stop all that. It's been a little bit overwhelming. Like when I look at it, most of the times I see my DM, I'm like, oh my God, there's like 50 DMs. I'm not even looking at it, right? And um, so I'm in kind of, that's where I'm at. I'm in a little bit of a jam. I'm kind of feeling like I should just stop everything for a moment and, uh, and restart. Don't do it. Um, I also have people in my DMs, appointment setting, doing all that cool stuff. So there's a app and I'll put it in the chat that you can use. Have you heard of ManyChat, Alex? Yes, so we use that. For the D for the auto responses for for when people DM certain words yeah. like invest or mastermind and things like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Alex, Here. I'll be your personal assistant. You Who need a secretary. That? Who's saying that? Alma. Oh, okay. All right. I'm gonna take us off of the spotlight so we can see everybody now. Yeah. Maybe I'll just leave Natalie on here. <laughs> <That's> so special. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And speaking of appointment setters and all that, I, I, um, there is somebody that I just want to introduce real quick. So Serena's here. Um, one of her students, Barbara actually linked us. So Barbara and Serena are here. And I think she might have brought some of her people in here, but you run a coaching program around teaching people to DM and, uh, and, and close, right? Yes, exactly. So just as Natalie was saying, um, you know, one of the ways to get more clients in your DMs is to have a CTA in your videos that says DM me this or comment invest. So if somebody commented on your post, you know, with the word invest or DM do you saying ready, then an appointment setter would basically be somebody from my team that you would hire and they would personally go through your DMs and send them a booking link or, you know, nurture them in your DMs a little bit more, pretending to be you essentially. Um, but that's what an appointment setter would do. And normally you'd need appointment setters and closers. I mean, if you've built your social media following, then, you know, I feel like at some point you're going to want to monetize that probably by creating your own coaching program. So having appointment setters and closers would definitely save you some time um, at the end of the day. I mean, time is money. Exactly. I love that. that. And appointment setting is such a crucial part of the business model of being a content creator that not a lot of people know about. And it can just help you leverage your time, reach out to more people, expand your network, find potential partners or clients, mentees. So, you know, at some point, everybody here is going to have a really strong personal brand. And they're going to reach out to Serena and say, hey, I need help from one of your students. <laughs> Great. So I think she has brought some of her people and here when you guys break out into the rooms you guys will get to meet them and um i think i need one nick do i need one natalie do i need one probably i mean i don't know what you're going <laughs> with, whether it's growing the legends community or whatever the heck but why yeah. not okay great so maybe i already have my mind on somebody okay cool perfect so any any questions let's ask some questions while she's here ask her the questions, right? She's busy. She gets probably a lot of DMs and this is your opportunity to grow. Go ahead, JJ. Hello. Um, I'm not really good at Instagram, you know, as much like, you know, so I want to ask, how do you go about getting followers? Like, because views are like easier to get than followers. Like, how do you convert, like, get a higher conversion rate into followers? Because I find that's sort of harder for me to do on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so a big part of that is going to be, obviously, consistency is part of it. To make sure you're consistent, you have a message that you're 
showing and the audience knows, hey, this guy isn't just like not real. You want to make sure that you're posting on your stories every single day. Because think about the natural, like natural follower path, right? They see your post, they're going to go to your page. The first thing they're going to do is read your bio and watch your story. If you have nothing on your story, you're not showing your face. I don't know if you're real. That's what's going through their mind, right? Who is this guy? I don't know if he's real. He's not even posting on his story. This is probably a fake account, reposting, right? <laughs> so post on your story consistently, post reels consistently, and make sure to have call to actions in your reel, whether it's follow me, whether it's comment, whether it's DM. That's going to be a great way to convert these views into followers. And especially if you're just starting out, and if you have a bit of a time advantage, JJ, reach out to the people who are following you, who just started following you, and spark a conversation. Hey, saw you followed me. What got you interested in blank, right? Mm -hmm. Is that? Yeah, for sure. Thanks. Awesome. Monica. Thanks so much for the information. I would like to know if I should have the same contacts on Facebook throughout like Insta, TikTok, and LinkedIn. I just feel like everybody sees the same thing because I've seen others. I'm like, oh, I've already seen that on Insta or I've already seen that on Facebook. Mm -hmm. Like and some of my people can't handle, <laughs> I shouldn't say that, we probably wouldn't be able to handle my TikTok versus my LinkedIn, you know? So everyone has a different, every uh, channel has a different vibe. Yeah. Repurpose content everywhere, to be honest, Monica. Most of the time, people don't need to be taught. They just need, need to be reminded. So just put that constant reminder out there. And if they feel like they're being annoyed by you, that's kind of a good thing because you're staying on top of their mind. <laughs> so just make sure to have those call to actions to get them to take some type of action. And that'll kind of like relieve like their emotional anxiety of, whew, Monica finally gave me a resource. I feel good about seeing her content now. <laughs> <laughs> thank you awesome serena go ahead um so i had a question about tiktok more specifically so what are your thoughts on you know captions hashtags ctas you know how often so one do hashtags matter and then how often should you be using ctas in your content yeah tiktok is a unique platform so for everybody here tiktok is like a mass exposure and awareness platform and for the call to actions, I would literally just tell them to go follow you on Instagram or to go DM you on Instagram. That's going to be the best way to make sure they're converting. They're actually, you know, turning into leads potentially there, right? For hashtags, I'm not a big fan of hashtags on any of the platforms. I think they're more intelligent now where they have AI listening to you. That's why whenever you literally say like hot dogs, you're going to get a video of a hot dog on your phone, probably like 30 minutes or something. So just focus on being clear on your messaging. Make sure you at least have clear audio. And in your captions, it could literally be something as simple as a one-liner, especially on TikTok, just talking about whatever you're talking about there. So just to summarize that up, not a big fan of hashtags. Be clear on your messaging. TikTok, you can have fun with it. Post however long videos, 30, 60, 90 seconds. And honestly, the more TikTok is like, the more raw, raw, the better. Even if you mess up, keep on going and just post it. Okay, thank you. Barbara, the insurance queen. <laughs> yeah. Hi, Natalie. So my question is, how often, I know consistency is key, but how much content would be ideal to really grow quickly, um, like daily, let's say, or daily or weekly, or what, what do you recommend? Yeah, so if I don't know too much about your account, but if you're looking to really take it to the next level, this is the content strategy I would implement for you, right? Post five times a week, right? Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Get off of Instagram on Saturday and Sunday. Super important. Don't post a friggin' thing. Okay. Not on stories, not on reels. Let it reset. On Monday through okay. Friday, go be talking or go be posting, let's say about three talking videos. Just walk and talk and pull out your phone, talk. The other two videos can be trending videos. So you might see those videos where it's like, you know, how the Beats headphones help me close more deals. Read caption, mm -hmm. five seconds mm -hmm. does read caption. That'll help you get a lot of exposure and awareness on the platform there. So I post about two of those videos. Another example might be 
Let me see if I can pull up an example to show you what exactly this would look like. But these also do well. It's basically just talking about your story, but in more of like a, a bubbly format, for lack of a better term. So if you can see my screen, it's just a picture mm -hmm. of this guy. Month one, month two. He's literally just walking through his journey with some old pictures. Mm -hmm. okay. So this is another example of a trendy video. Okay. So three talking videos, two trendy style videos. Mm -hmm. However you want to do that. And mm -hmm. get off the platform on Saturday and Sunday. Don't even open it. Okay. Good to know. Good to know. And then also... Um, in terms of the different platforms, I noticed uh, what does well on Instagram doesn't do as well on Facebook or TikTok, right? So it's like very different. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it, it, do you create content specifically for each platform, like different content for each platform or the same thing for everything? Good question. So for the talking videos, repurpose them everywhere, no matter what. Okay. okay. Everything on TikTok. You purpose everything on Instagram. Honestly, you purpose everything on Facebook. But for YouTube in particular, only repurpose your talking videos there, right? And again, you don't have to create content for specifically for a platform. Just focus on getting good at content and repurposing it everywhere, right? Okay. You don't want this to be an overwhelming thing because eventually if you get overwhelmed, you're going to get burnt out and you're going to stop posting. So mm -hmm. just focus on reducing the friction and repurpose the content everywhere. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> okay. We're going to go Isabel, Donna, and Giovanna, and then that, okay. And Jasmine. And, uh, and then we're going to do the breakout room. All right. So go ahead, Isabel. Hi, Natalie. Thank you. I am um, trying to get out of the dark and uh, be more present. I mean, I have nothing of followers when you said something about 10,000 I was like huh. yeah she's so modest I have barely a hundred people so uh I what is your recommendation for somebody that is just starting and would you still have them do five days a week and even like there's things that I can't do you know like do reels or I just know how to post and I can't do all these combined videos, all this stuff, or is there any class, anything that you recommend or for with who to take and something that is more simple. And like you said, you know, doesn't get overwhelming. That is one question. The second question is what a lot of people have asked to all people, social media, if you mix two business, if you post about two business that you have, if you you know, when do you post? How do you post? Uh, interact with the two. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. So we'll start off with your second question, business and personal, right? So just to clarify, it's like, how do you balance the two? No, right. it's both two, two different business. Two different businesses on one page, right? Yes. Got it. What are these two different businesses of yours? So it's uh, real estate investing and insurance, life insurance. Got it. Got it. And the life insurance, is this uh, like the infinite banking style thing? Yes. Got it. Yes. And do you work with real estate investors? Yeah, I'm trying to, yes, to get people to invest with us, with legends. Yes. And so do you help real estate investors with setting up their infinite banking accounts? I never done that. Uh, and I do property management as well. Got it. So for that aspect, I would focus on what's going to really drive the needle for your long-term goals, right? Is the insurance business more of an active income in this moment and something you want to retire from in the next two, three years? All right, maybe we won't show this off. If real estate investing is going to be your number one priority in the next year or so, you want to raise tens of millions of dollars, focus on that. So you really have to align what are your goals for the long-term because building your brand is a long-term play. So get some clarity on that and go all in with whatever aspect of the business will really drive the needle for your goals. Um, and then use a one fourth rule for every four pieces of content. Only one will be about your business. It's about real estate. The other three will be about hobbies, interests, and challenging perspectives. So if you're just starting out, uh, we work with a lot of people who are literally starting from zero. And so what I would recommend is, of course, 
DM me on Instagram. I'll give you this whole resource so you can just lay it all out and just focus on hitting the record button. We want to reduce the friction. So record directly in the Instagram app. And in, a lot of people think, okay, I need to record one big clip. And if I mess up, I got to delete it and start over. You don't have to do it that way. What you can do is, I'll just show you an example. You can press the record button, stop, record, stop. So you can record one sentence at a time. So that way if you mess up, you only have to delete one clip. So what you can do is just focus on, again, just learning how to communicate better on camera, get some clarity on your brand foundations and record one sentence at a time. And especially if you're just starting out, understand this is a long-term play. At least put out 30 videos before even looking at your view count. Don't look at the view count, don't look at your follower count, just focus on building up that consistency. Kind of like going to the gym, right? Like you're gonna go to the gym, maybe you're gonna work out. You're not gonna look at your muscles every day. You'll look at maybe 30 days and be like, oh, well, I can see a little tricep right here, right? So just focus on building that habit and focus on really getting clarity on what your business is going to be. And yeah, JJ says 100 videos for Mr. Beast. Mr. Beast posted 300 times before he even got his first 10,000 followers. That's a lot of videos. So it's a long-term play, Isabel. I think you definitely have the mindset to get it going. Again, just DM me on Instagram and I'll send you this resource. So at least you have some direction in the, in the way that you're going to be approaching your content. Does that help? Oh, yes, that helps. Thank you so much. Awesome. Uh, okay, go ahead, Donna. Giovanna, are you done with your question? Do you not have one? No, she actually answered it when she was okay, like group on responding. Thank you. Okay, cool. Go ahead, Donna. Hey, um, I have two questions uh, similar to what Isabel was asking because I actually have a full-time job and trying to build a business. So how do you balance those two kind of things? That's yeah. one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so again, I work with a lot of people who have nine to fives and they're building their multifamily empire, right? So what you want to do is you'll want to find a balance. And so anybody can implement this strategy. So you know how there's like a left brain and the right brain. And I always forget which one's which, but one of them's creative and one of them is logical. So most people, when they approach content, they're like, okay, I'm going to create content. I'm going to get some ideas. I'm going to record. And then, you know, an hour goes by and they maybe recorded like a video or two, maybe. Right. So instead what we'll do is on one day, let's say on a Sunday, we're going to put all of our ideas out there. Right? Do your brand foundations, get your hundred ideas locked in. And the following day, not the same night, not a couple hours later, the next day, we're going to film our content. So Donna, for you, what I would focus on is creating a brainstorming day and booking it in your calendar. There's that whole concept of like taking the time versus making the time, make the time to brainstorm and list your ideas out. And then that way, the filming process will be a lot easier because you already know the message that you want to deliver there. Does that help? Oh, it does. Thank you. So is there, like, I guess if I'm working, though, I, I always feel a little uh, wondering what my peers at the job are thinking when I'm posting stuff about my coaching business. So, but I guess I just have to be bold and figure it out. Being bold is like half the key to success, at least in my experience. So you know, what's going to be funny, Donna, is you're going to do this. You're going to get really consistent. Some of those people at your job are going to be like, how can I work with you? How are you doing what you're doing? You think they're judging, but they're watching. And you want them to watch you because then they're going to start asking you questions. Thank you. Awesome. Jasmine. Hello, my friend. Hey, guys. Hey, Natalie. Super excited to be here. And just my quick question is like, what uh, recommendations would you have for me on Instagram? Uh, you follow me so you kind of know the content that I put. I'm trying harder to push it, but just wanted to hear your input. Yeah, for sure. Let me pull up your page real quick. Let's see here. Okay, yeah. Immediately I'll say, I want to see more of your face. I want to see you talking. I feel like it takes me like, probably maybe, uh, let's see, 15 videos to hear your voice. I'm like, what does Jasmine sound like? Where is she? Who is she? Is she real? You know, <laughs> that's what people are saying. They're literally yeah. everyone is fake. So you're like, is she real? And on your stories, Jasmine, 
talk on your stories, right? You can film the other side, but show your face. I would say show your face, Jasmine. What this will do is it'll help build trust with the people who are following you. It'll remind them what they look like. And it's kind of the concept of looking someone in the eye. You feel like a deeper connection with them, right? So use your voice more. Use a one-fourth rule for your content. And just double down on being consistent on your story. Lay in the couch. Do that for like the next um, three weeks and see how that makes an impact on the relationship that you have with your audience. And of course, you know, I don't know what's happening on the back end, but just make sure to nurture the DMs that people, are, for the people who are reaching out to you so they know that you care. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. I'll let you know how it goes. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, awesome. So look, there's so much information that's been given. Like, I hope that you guys take away one thing, right? Just take away one thing. Whatever you heard here, take away one thing. If it was all too, like, too much over your head, there's going to be a recording that I'm going to send out. And then everybody, you can go back and watch this. Now, first, I want to say thank you, Natalie, for being here and bringing value to our community, you know? And um, everybody that I bring onto this call are people that I have vetted and I have relationship with, okay? I don't just bring anybody onto this call. So if you're going to work with Natalie, it's because I have seen her and I have seen her consistency and have had multiple conversations with her and she's made an impact in my life. Okay. So I can confidently say you can work with, you know, Natalie and, you know, know that you're going to get value. Like she just provided right here. So I want to first say that, um, second, okay. I do want to say, I do want to now drop something that I'm doing real quick which is it's going to help you guys find your message as well. Okay, so I have been teaching this, this course from Stanford, actually. This is a course that was, well, written by a professor in Stanford, and I've been teaching it. It's called The Clarity Catalyst. So I'll open this real quick. Um, myself and, and my friend Cora Lee, she's a professional bodybuilder. And, um, you know, my wife actually was a student of mine on the first time that I taught this. And I, she wasn't my wife then. We didn't, you know, we didn't really know each other. But it opens up, like, it ignites your creativity and your passion. It will have you step outside the box. It's going to teach you how to find your passion and all of that. This is our, you know, this is the first time Coralie and I are coming together to do this. So it's basically free. It's an eight-week program. Really, you know, um, Nick, if you can put the, uh, the just like a sign up link or something, if you're interested to know more, we're going to do something for this. We're really not going to have a really big group. Um, this is kind of our pilot group to see how we work together in this space. But, um, you know, it is a very, very powerful course. Um, when in Stanford, they, they were, you know, people were graduating with, you know, it's a great college, it's a great university. And people were graduating and they were seeing how everybody had so much, had such great jobs, had a lot of money, but wasn't happy. Why weren't they happy? And then why were the people that, you know, what did the people that had happiness and fulfillment have that, you know, others didn't? So this course was designed around that. And um, it's changed my life. And people that have taken this course with me, I know the impact that it has made. And, um, you know, Coralie is you know, a really, really inspiring person. And even just to get to know her and see her work ethic. And, you know, she's just a really beautiful soul. Um, I just wanted to put that out there before we, you know, go off into breakout rooms. So yeah, Nick, did you already put it in there? Yes, I did. Okay, great. So feel free to check it out. You know, it's a really, it's super, super amazing. Okay, uh, Natalie, anything, any last advice you want to drop for us before we break out into, into breakout rooms? No, I just want to say thank you so much, guys. You guys are super engaging. Love the energy here. And that energy is just super magnetic. And as a magnetic person, you're going to do a great job at growing a profitable audience. So, you know, get past that mental block. We're here to support you. Find a partner, do your brand foundations, and hit the ground running. All right. Awesome. Well, it's been great that you, you can also join the breakout rooms if you want. Um, I know a lot of our guest speakers have, have done that and it really brings value for people that are in there and you get to meet them too. So in the breakout room, obviously share who you are, where you're from, what do you do? 
And also, maybe you'll find your partner here that's going to help you write your story, right? At least take that part away. And I don't know, maybe you already know the person that you want to be partnered with, you know, in your life, but share, get to know each other. From these breakout rooms, I'm going to tell you right now, there has been, other, people have come together and created their own Zooms and, and doing their own things. From these breakout rooms, business partnerships have been developed. You know, they're here right now, actually, because it's been so valuable, right? Like they act, the business was developed through that. Um, you know, I've seen real estate deals being done together in here. And so be here in a way that you're going to get value, right? You're going to, it's up to you. So get to, get to meet this, uh, the people that are going to be in your room. And I look forward to hearing the experience in about 12 minutes. So we're going to break you guys out 12 minutes. Somebody keep track, give everybody an opportunity to talk, right? Like two minutes each or whatever. Um, you guys be in charge of that. You're all leaders. So Nick, break them out. They're broken. Broken. See y'all in 12 minutes. Going. Bye, recording.